chair now recognizes the gentleman from California's 23rd district for five minutes for questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to our witnesses. It's been a really interesting hearing. Uh, Ms. Lang, I uh, have to start with you. You said in your testimony that uh, the executive order was just one piece of the puzzle in establishing a regulatory framework for AI, and I, I completely agree with that. I think the executive order was very helpful in a lot of different ways, but I mean, obviously, because of the separation of powers, there are things that the executive branch can do, which is to control uh, the federal bureaucracy, and there are things that the executive branch really can't do, which is to establish regulatory guidance for private industry. Now, the executive order, uh, I think, had some overreach in it. Uh, it invokes the Defense Production Act to be able to impose some regulation on industry, which I, I think is not going to stand up to legal scrutiny. But uh, as you said, Congress has an important role to play here. Uh, and you know, certainly establishing that regulatory framework is a big part of that important role. So I'd like to ask you about that, about what role does Congress have to play here? Because obviously we have a system of federalism here in the United States. We believe that states should have the right to establish regulation in things that don't interfere with the federal government's prerogative over interstate commerce. But it gets a little messy with AI because AI on the one hand is clearly interstate commerce related. Uh, but on the other hand, is going to be so pervasive, it's going to invade most aspects of our economy. So uh, the question I want to ask about is preemption. Do you think that the federal government ought to preempt this and say the regulatory framework that we create is going to be the regulatory framework for AI? Or do, we think, or do you think that uh, we should let the states innovate on this? Or do you think that the answer is somewhere in between? Thank you for the question, Congressman. It's a good one. Um, and certainly something that we have seen play out in the privacy context as well, where states have started to create their um, individual approaches in lieu of, of comprehensive privacy legislation at the federal level. I do think you know it will likely be somewhere in the middle. Um, right now, we're kind of still in the early days of uh, both internationally what's happening, right? We were just talking about the European Union and how they're approaching it, but certainly here in the US too, we're starting to see states think about it. Um, so, you know, I think as, as we proceed, we'll have additional information about what an appropriate um, legislative framework looks like, but I do think to some extent we need to be considering the conditions that are, you know, occurring in the states and kind of what's progressing there, and then we'll figure out um, what, what needs to go into um, legislation or a framework at the federal level. Right. Well, I think that uh, you were correct in bringing up federal uh, pri data privacy as an example of what can go wrong, because, uh, you know, the federal government failed to act on that for so long that now we're going to have this patchwork of 50 different state regulations, I think we've got 23 already, and that's very destructive to entrepreneurialism and interstate commerce. So I think we wanna make sure that we that, that does not happen again with respect to AI. But uh, my point is that this is, we're at a fork in the road, right? We have to choose one or the other or something in between, but it has to be done now. Uh, Dr. Turner Lee, thank you very much for being here. and, and uh, I actually think it's very helpful to have a sociologist here. I'm a computer scientist, so you know we, we, we've got the spectrum covered. Uh, I wanted to ask you a sociology question because you had said in your testimony that you have a, a grave concern with the identification of AI-generated content, which is something that I'm very concerned about as well because of its uh, potential use to spread mis- and disinformation. And you mentioned watermarking as something that could be used to uh, identify with that content. But uh, let me push back gently on that because I have a, I have a sociology-related concern about that. The problem is if we were to establish a rule that all artificial contact is, content is watermarked, then it would all be watermarked except for the stuff that you know, was, was generated by malicious actors that really, really were bent on deception. Mm -hmm. And I think that from a sociological standpoint, that would desensitize the public mm -hmm. to the fact that AI-generated content you know, does exist and can fool them. So, I mean, I, I would think that maybe watermarking should be used, maybe in addition to that, to, to uh, verify the authenticity and the providence of, of real content. So if you get a CNN broadcast, you've got a digital watermark on there that verifies that it's a CNN broadcast mm -hmm. and not generated. Yeah. So uh, would you agree with that? Well, yeah, I, I, I agree we should have a taxonomy, right? We shouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily say that everything is watermarked because it doesn't necessarily have to be. But where there are instances of high risk or high vulnerabilities, clearly we should maybe present a taxonomy of where we want to use that. And happy to follow up with you. Sure. Well, I mean, I, I, my, my fear is that mm -hmm. uh, we have learned to our misfortune in other domains right. 
that when we make rules, everyone follows the rules except the people that really, really don't want to follow the rules. And if you get a, a, a piece of artificially generated content that is really controversial that changes people's opinions, there's going to be a huge incentive for people not to follow the rules. That's right. uh, so I, I'm not sure that that would be effective, but uh, it's, it's a fascinating discussion. I've got a million other questions, but I'm out of time. So yeah. thanks again for a very fascinating hearing. We'll, we'll continue the discussion. I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.